There are millions of acres of public lands in Minnesota. Our goal is to protect the few remaining wild areas and make those wildlife areas into the sanctuaries they are intended to be. Public lands aren't just for humans. They protect critical ecosystems and habitats important for the survival of pollinator, bird, and wildlife species. Minnesota DNR manages 5.6 million acres of land, including state parks, state forests, wildlife management areas, and scientific and natural areas. 15,000 acres of those public lands are rented out for industrial crops such as GMO corn. Toxic synthetic insecticides need to be prohibited in protected wildlife areas. Wildlife are running out of space. Instead, croplands in public state parks and wildlife management areas can be converted to native habitat. What you're looking at here behind me is an area that has been turned from farmland into uh, prairie grass planted by me, but it's just a small sample of what this country looked like uh, 200 years ago. In Minnesota, there's over seven and a half to eight million acres of corn and soybeans that are planted and very little of the native prairie and prairie grass. The result of that is just a huge decrease just in my lifetime of the amount of insect life, bird life that uh, exists, including things that most people think about as far as the uh, prairie birds of uh, meadowlarks and bobolinks, but also the ones that many sports people are interested in as far as pheasants and ducks and, and, and such. The uh, monarch butterfly population, which used to come through here by the thousands, is down into the hundreds now, and the population of monarchs and other uh, butterflies have down by as much as 90%. I'm at St. Croix Bluffs Regional Park. I'm standing in front of a 38-acre conversion project from corn crops to native prairie. And it's a collaborative, collaborative project between Washington County Parks, Conservation District, and Pollinator Friendly Alliance. We are transforming this from corn, which is no good for any kind of wildlife, to a native prairie, which will enrich the soil, uh, create biodiversity and provide habitat for pollinators, birds, and wildlife. Um, we use the cover crop of sunflowers, which now have gone to seed and they are being harvested right now. Uh, we'll disc it next and seed it with a native prairie mix. We just had a really nice sunflower crop. They were planted late, so we're harvesting them a bit late. So the deer like them, and the bees like them. And the birds. And the birds. Everybody likes the sunflowers. Waterfowl production areas are lands that have been purchased uh, with the proceeds of duck stamps, and their primary purpose is to preserve habitat for uh, migratory birds with an emphasis in waterfowl but also any of the, the bird species that are in trouble and uh, many of them are right now grassland dependent birds wetland dependent birds um, and it, it's it's pretty easy to understand why uh, Minnesota's lost 99% of its prairie there's only about 1% left. And we've lost somewhere between 90 to 95% of our prairie potholes have been destroyed. So if you're a species that relies on that prairie or those prairie potholes, you're in trouble. And so our primary focus on waterfowl production areas are, are uh, uh, migratory birds and other species whose populations are in decline. And in order to try to manage for those, you have to recreate or try to recreate the habitat that supported them. And that is wetlands and the prairie that used to be here. 
the prairie is pretty complicated to try to re recreate because naturally any given acre of prairie when Europeans showed up might have had 300 species of plants growing on it. And there, the whole host of wildlife from the pollinators, the insects, the amphibians, uh, the reptiles, the birds, the mammals that lived there relied on that diversity of plants. In our area are lands that were farmed for a hundred plus years. Typically most if not all of the wetlands were drained on them years ago and they were used, have been used for uh, the type of agricultural production that basically occurs now. In this particular area, the vast majority of those lands are corn and soybeans. We also have some other crops, uh, but you're talking in each of those cases an annual crop that was monotypic, one species. Uh, those lands were treated with herbicides, insecticides, um, fungicides and all kinds of things to try to make sure that they had the highest yield they could get. So you're looking at one species of plant that would have existed out there. After we restore them, uh, we're hoping to have, you know, a hundred plus species of native plants out there that provide uh, structural habitat for nesting birds, uh, winter habitat for resident species that need that for thermal cover and then of course we really emphasize a lot of our native forbs or flowering plants that provide habitat for pollinators and a whole host of species uh, that need nectar sources and pollen sources. Um, we want as much diversity out there as possible because with the more plant diversity you have, the more animal diversity you have.